This is Jeremy Drevenstead with Demco Products. In this video, we are going to cover how to install our actuator. Let's go over a couple things and then we'll get started. The most common reason we see cable breaks is because there isn't enough cable between the end of the actuator and the anchor on the firewall. So when the towed vehicle is being driven around normally and the driver pushes on that brake pedal, it's actually bending our cable repeatedly. Eventually it's gonna break where it's been bending. Ideally, we're looking for three and a half to four inches in cable length. By doing this, it allows our cable to actually coil rather than bend. Now, if you don't have enough room between your brake pedal arm and the firewall to get that three and a half to four inches, don't worry. All you have to do is loosen these two Allen head screws and flip around our clamp like so. This will give you a couple more inches to work with when you install your actuator. On some vehicles, the firewall is thin metal, so a single self-tapping screw will not hold. In these cases, we recommend you use the optional reinforcement plate that is included in the kit. To use this, in the desired location for the anchor, hold up the plate and shoot in the two outer self-tapping screws. Next. Shoot in the center self-tapper to secure the anchor. You'll notice the center hole is smaller than the two outer holes. This is so when you shoot in the self-tapper, it catches on the plate as well as the firewall when you screw it in. On some vehicles, they may have a wider brake pedal arm, so the standard bolts on the actuator clamp won't fit around the pedal. But don't worry, we got you covered. We supplied longer bolts in the kit and swapping them out is fairly simple. Start by taking the two Allen head screws from the clamp. Next, remove the nuts off the screws and slide off the outer portion of the clamp. Using a socket wrench, unscrew the smaller bolts out of the clamp assembly. Before you screw in the longer screws, we recommend that you put Loctite on them. Then just simply screw in the longer screws and tighten them down with a flathead screwdriver. Also, add Loctite to the Allen head screws, reinstall them, and you're ready to go. Demco now has a spacer available for this type of pedal. It is part number 6356. It is not required to install the actuator on this type of pedal, but it makes the installation a little easier. To use the spacer, you will need the longer screws installed. Hold the spacer in the desired location against the flat area of the pedal. This can be taped into place to help with the installation. Now that we've gone over the different scenarios you may run into, we're ready to learn how to install the actuator. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is check and see if we have adjustable brake pedals. If you do have adjustable brake pedals, we're gonna to need to go ahead and move those into the full up position before we do our install. Next, what we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and feed our cable through our anchor. As you can see, we're going to double loop it. Now I'm going to keep it loose right now, and you're going to see why here in just a minute. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to hold it up to the brake arm, kind of center our clamp on it, and we're going to look for a spot on the firewall that's in alignment with the brake pedal and the movement it's going to make. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab onto our anchor and slide it forward to the firewall. Then we're going to hold the cable in place on our anchor, bring it back down, and we're going to pull this loop tight. We don't want it to be loose. If we leave it a big loop in it, and what's going to do is the first time it actuates, it's going to try and pull that loop out, and then we're going to end up with the loose cable. Next, we're going to grab a Allen wrench, and tighten down our little set screw here. And we don't want to get gorilla tight on it. We just want to get it to where it bottoms out and give it about a half a turn. Now that we've tightened that down, we can go ahead and look on the other side of our firewall in the area that we picked for our anchor and make sure we're not going to hit anything with our self-tapping screw like the brake booster. Once we've verified that, we can go ahead and shoot in our self-tapping screw. And then next, what we're going to do is take our actuator, put up on our brake arm, and start all of our nuts. 
And we can actually move it forward and back to fine tune it. Now what we're looking for is a quarter inch of play in our cable. Once we've found the right amount of slack in our cable, we can go ahead and start tightening down our four nuts on our clamp here. We're going to want to use a crisscross motion to evenly tighten down the clamp. And we actually want it to bend around the brake arm. This is going to act like a lock nut for our nuts here. Once you got that tightened down, all that's left is to attach our air hose to the back of our air fitting right here. 